this very holy month. Welcome to IECOC and uh, we are going to start as usual with the recitation of the Holy Quran from Surah Al-An'am, maybe about four or five verses inshallah. Uh, please recite the last salawat. <coughs> أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم وكذلك جعلنا في كل قرية أكامر مجري مجرميها ليمكروا فيها وما يمكرون إلا بأنفسهم وما يمكرون إلا بأنفسهم وما الذين أجرموا صغار عند الله عذاب شديد بما كانوا يمكرون فمن يرد الله أن يهديه يشرح صدره للإسلام ومن يرد أن يضله يجعل صدره ضيقا حرجا يجعل صدره ضيقا حرجا كأنما يصعد في السباء كذلك يجعل الله الرجس على الذين لا يؤمنون وهذا صراط ربك مستقيما وا 
هذا صراط ربك مستقيبا قد فصلنا الآيات لقوم يذكرون لهم دار السلام عند ربهم هم دار السلام عند ربهم وهو وليهم بما كانوا يعملون صدق الله العلي Inshallah. With another salawat, we're going to invite the Imam of the Center, Honorable Sayyid Mustafa Al Qazbini, to the podium. Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. We extend our condolences to Dr. Abir Swaydan for the passing away of her father today, the late Marhum Haj Muhammad Swaydan Abu Ali in Lebanon. Please join me in reciting Surah Al-Fatiha for his soul. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alameen. Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Maliki yawm al-Din. Iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'in. Adana as-salatu al-Muslaqim wa salatu al-Adhina al-Amta alayhim. Ghayr al-Mawdubi alayhim wa al-Adhalim. May Allah bless his soul. Inshallah, and gather him with the Prophet and Ahlul Bayt in paradise, Inshallah. I know you are, Abir, you are worried about your dad, but we shouldn't worry about our loved ones when they move, when they, when they pass away, because when they are sick, yes, we worry about them a lot. When they are bedridden or suffering. But once they die, we assign them to God. God is receiving them. God is going to host them. God is going to take them under his wing of mercy and compassion and love. God is more merciful than us. So no worries. When they leave, assign them to God. And all we can say, inna lillah wa inna ilayhi raji'un. Again, my condolences to you, Dr. Abir. Surah Al-Anbiya. Verses 23 to 25, inshallah. And next week, please note that it would be the, <clears throat> the anniversary of the martyrdom of our seventh Imam, Al Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al Kadhim, alayhi salam. Some of you in the audience are the descendants of this Imam, like me. Either you are Musawi or Kadhimi. Both. Kadhimi, Hussein is Kadhimi. In India and Pakistan, they call them Kadhimi. In Iran and Iraq, they call, in Lebanon, they call them Musawi. So we will commemorate his martyrdom, inshallah. On, uh, the martyrdom itself is on Tuesday, 25th of Rajab, but our session will be on uh, next Thursday, inshallah. The martyrdom of our Imam, Al Imam Musa ibn Ja'far al Kadhim, alayhi salatu was salam. <coughs> بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أنبياء الله جميعا وعلى سيدهم وخاتمهم حبيب إله العالمين أبي القاسم المصطفى محمد وعلى أهل بيته الطيبين الطاهرين المعصومين سيما سيدنا ومولانا الإمام الحجة بن الحسن المهدي المنتظر عجل الله تعالى فرجه وسهل مخرجه وجعلنا من أنصاره وأعوانه أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون أم اتخذوا من دونه آلهة قل هاتوا برهانكم هذا ذكر من معي وذكر من قبلي 
بل أكثرهم لا يعلمون الحق فهم معرضون وما أرسلنا من قبلك من رسول إلا نوحي إليه أنه لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدون صدق الله العلي العظيم Is it permissible in Islam to ask why, why we are doing this, why we are doing that? Is it permissible to ask God, God, why you created this? Why you are asking me to do that? Is it permissible or not? The questions are of two types. One type, it's an inquiry. You are inquiring. You want to make clarification. You are learning. You are understanding. So you come to someone and ask him a question so you can understand. And this is totally acceptable. Even if you ask God. Even if you ask God. Angels, they ask God. When he decided, when he broke the news to them that I'm going, I'm going to create a man and that man is my vicegerent on earth. They said to him, why? But this why is to learn, is an inquiry, which is acceptable and okay. We need to learn. Islam is about learning. You cannot worship if you don't learn. You cannot submit yourself if you don't know why. It's not a blind following. We don't have a blind following. God says, I want you to understand religion in order for you to like it, to appreciate it, and to follow me. The other type of questions, however, are not an inquiry. They are argumentative. They are challenging. They are objectional. They ask to object, to argue with you, to challenge you, to oppose you, to say you are wrong. I am right, you are wrong. A Jewish man in Medina came to the Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said, oh, Muhammad, since he does not recognize him as the messenger of God, Jews and Christians and the pagans would call the Prophet Muhammad, Ya Muhammad. The Prophet said, yes. He said, I have questions. The Prophet said, yeah, okay, I'm here to answer. So when he started asking, and he did not listen. Those who argue with you, they ask you a question, but they don't listen to the answer. The Prophet said to him something important we must learn. He said something very important. He said to him, O oh man, sell mustafsiran wa la tasal muta'annitan. If you have a question, ask as an inquiry to learn the answer. Wait for me to give you the answer, but do not ask as muta'annit. Muta'annit means a stubborn. And argumentative if you want to be stubborn I don't have time I'm busy but if you want to learn I'm willing to sit for several hours with you here in this verse my friends verse 23 La the translation of it is God shall not be questioned about what he does however they shall be questioned. We people shall be questioned tomorrow. Stop them. For they have to provide answers. We have to provide many answers. Many answers on that day. There are many questions. Before they let us go, we have to answer. There is interrogation on the day of judgment, my friends. We cannot pass without answering these questions. So we will be asked, but God is not questioned or asked. Here, some people say, since the Quran says God is not going to be questioned, therefore you, as a believer, as a Muslim, you cannot say to God why, or to the messenger of God why I am doing this, why I should do that. But this is not the right interpretation. Those who say this, they belong to the school that believes in blind following. That school 
is the mujabbira, coercionist. They believe that we are here like animals on earth. We have no choice. We have no say. We have no right. God created us and he is remotely controlling us. He's deciding our fate for us. He's deciding the journey for us. He's forcing us to follow this path. We have no choice. This is Al-Mujabbira, the coercionist. They believe in coercion and force. Versus the other school. Which one the other school? Al-Mukhayyara. Which means what? The school of? Huh? Choice and free will. But no, they say, no, 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 no. We are a human being. We are dignified. We have reason. We have choice. God cannot force anyone to believe if he does not want to believe. God does not send anyone to hellfire if he worshipped him in this life. Neither he can reward a criminal on the day of... Yes, he is the supreme court. He is the superior power. He is the creator. He is everything. But he does not break the law. God is not above the law. God himself, he created this law. He cannot be above the law. So there is an ongoing debate between these two schools. Mujabbira are the coercionist or a predestination school who believes that you came into this life without any choice. God wanted you to be a believer from day one. So you have to re remain believer. And that one who is disbeliever, God wants him to be disbeliever because God wants to punish him. This is dictatorship. And God is not dic a dictator. He's not a dictator. God says in the Quran, chapter 76, Inna We show you the map, the road map, the way, the path, what is good, what is bad, and then we leave the choice with you. Either be Shakiran, grateful, you follow the right direction, the right path, wa imma, or either kafura, ungrateful, rebellious. We have a free will. The Ash'arite, the followers of Abu Hassan al-Ash'ari, they follow the first school, the predestination, the coercionist. And by the way, the madhab that dominates the Arabian Peninsula and Saudi Arabia is the Wahhabi tradition, Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab, 400 years ago, he followed the Ash'arite tradition. He followed, he followed him and they believe that we have no choice in this life. If you are good, not because you want to be good, God wants you to be good. If you are evil, not because you insist on being evil, God wants you to be evil. We say no. That does not work. God is just. And God does not force anyone to do something against his or her will. The second school are those who believe in absolute free will. You are completely 100% free in this life. We also tell them you are wrong. There is a freedom, but this freedom is limited. Because God is supervising you. Yes, he does not force you. But he cares about you and he guides you. So your freedom is limited. It's not 100%. Because sometimes, sometimes you decide to do something but you cannot do. It goes against your wish. Every single day you have a wish and you try to accomplish something but you cannot do that. Because God does not want you to do that. You are not, you are not God. God has 100% freedom. We are slaves and subordinates to God. But God is not going to coerce us and force us to do something that we don't like. So here, so then what does it mean? La yus'alu amma yaf'al. God shall not be questioned. The coercionists, they believe, they, this is how they translate. They say God is not answerable to creation. He is unanswerable for what he does. And he doesn't need to explain. He say, God does not need to explain anything. He's the supreme court, the supreme power. You cannot ask him why. We tell them no. 
even God, you can ask him why. But not why as an argument. Why as an inquiry to learn. Because angels asked him why. Why you are creating man, he explained to them. This is the difference. لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. The right answer regarding this verse is with Ahlul Bayt. My friends, whenever you get confused about a verse in the Quran, you don't know the true meaning. The verse is a bit complicated to be understood. Go and knock at one door. That door and that gate is the gate of Ahlul Bayt alayhi wasallam. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, Ana Madinatul Ilm. I am the city. And this hadith unanimously accepted by all traditions and all scholars. No one can debate the authenticity, the credibility of this hadith. Ana Madinatul Ilm. I am the city of knowledge. And the gate to that city, wa aliyun babuha. Ali is the gate. Faman arad al Madina, whoever intends to go. Into the city should go through where? Through climbing the wall, through the roof? No. وَعَلِيٌّ بَابُهَا فَمَنْ أَرَادَ الْمَدِينَةَ فَلْيَأْتِهَا مِنْ بَابِهَا Whoever intends to reach me, Ali is the gate. Come through this gate. Don't go to other gates. Other gates are going to send you somewhere else. Not to the Prophet. They're going to send you to other directions. Go to the right gate, the rightful gate, the genuine gate. Don't be an illegal immigrant there. Be legal. Be a documented immigrant, not undocumented. If you want to be a documented on, in paradise, go through the gate of Imam Ali alayhi salam. Legal gate. These are the instructions of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And Ali did not... <clears throat> Reserve the knowledge only for himself. So when he dies, the knowledge is going to die with him. He passed this knowledge. He received it from the Prophet. And he passed it to the next generation. To Hassan, Hussein, Ali ibn Hussein, Muhammad ibn Ali, Ja'far ibn Muhammad, Musa ibn Ja'far. Until the last Imam, Imam al-Mahdi alayhi salatu wassalam. Imam Muhammad al-Baqir comes to this verse. لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون Meaning, God should not be, shall not be questioned about what he does, but they shall be questioned. See what he says. Because the knowledge of Imam al-Baqir is from the Prophet. And the knowledge of the Prophet is the knowledge of whom? Of God. He receives that through angel Gabriel. He says, when he was asked, he says, not, it doesn't mean you cannot ask God. You may ask God, but you cannot argue with God. Why you cannot argue with God? Because, لِأَنَّهُ لَا يَفْعَلْ إِلَّا مَا كَانَ حِكْمَةً وَصَوَابًا When someone does everything accurate, everything with wisdom, with reason, and everything accurately and professionally, then you don't argue with him. You argue with someone who does not know what to do. Someone who doesn't have knowledge. Someone who does not, he, he lacks profession. You argue with him. But when God, everything, everything he does is perfect, is organized, then as a believer, you may not argue with God. If your father, if your mentor, if your teacher is a wise teacher, and you've known him for 30, 40 years. And he makes no mistakes. And everything he says is well established and well founded. Then you are not going to argue with such a person. You submit to him, to his knowledge. We, the believers, we, sub we submit to God. We don't tell him, God, then why wine is forbidden? Why? Wine is good, delicious, healthy. There is a reason. There is a reason. Why hijab is mandatory? There is a reason. This is submission, my friends. This is submission. 
why homosexuality is unacceptable. There is a reason. God does not issue arbitrary judgments. God does not abuse anyone. When he says this is okay, it means it is safe. When he says this is not okay, it means it's not safe. So trust the judgment of God. Trust the reason of God. Trust the fairness of God. Trust God. لا يسأل عما يفعل وهم يسألون. This is the meaning. That we are not arguing with God. We surrender to Him. But when it comes to an inquiry, yes, I ask God. Because I want to learn. My intention is not to argue with Him and fight with Him. Then, أم اتخذوا من دونه آلهة God says, those pagans, have they taken gods apart from him? قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ If you believe that there is God beside God, bring me your proof, your evidence. Do not utter anything if you don't have a proof. God says, don't. If you claim something, allege something, you have an idea, you have to have the proof. If you don't have the proof, remain silent. Remain silent. قُلْ هَاتُوا بُرْهَانَكُمْ Bring your burhan, your evidence. Even in social matters, my friends, political matters, social matters, you know, financial matters, when we sit, the family, they are sitting, you know, together having dinner. Sometimes they have discussion, they argue. Some of them, they argue without evidence, without a proof. It's not good. Don't waste your time and the time of people who are with you by, by arguing if you don't have a proof. Unless you, prove, you bring an evidence, a proof, solid proof. Solid proof. God says to those pagans, bring me a proof. Where is the second God? Where do you see him? Where is his influence? Those idols are gods. Where is their influence? An idol that cannot carry herself or himself cannot feed themselves, they are blind, they don't see, they don't hear, they don't understand, they don't respond. How do you take them as lords? How? In India, they demolished a mosque, Barbary mosque, and they established a Hindu temple, and they're going to open it soon, Lord Rama. A lord, have you seen? Google Lord Rama, see his picture. I don't disrespect any religion. But God who has several hands and, you know, several, you know, and, and God which is an idol, that God does not function. That God does not help himself, let alone helping me. We believe in the God who's effective, we see, we see his influence, we see his presence in our life. If we connect with him, we see his presence. God who's able to answer you, to help you. So, My argument, a reminder for those who are with me and those who are before me. All the prophets, unanimously, they proved the existence of God, the oneness of God, the monotheism of God. But then Quran says, بَلْ أَكْثَرُهُمْ لَا يَعْلَمُونَ الْحَقَّ فَهُمْ مُعْرِضُونَ Most of them do not know the truth, so they turn away. When this chapter came, where did the chapter come? Where? In Mecca. Who were the people of Mecca at that time? The majority of them? Quraysh. Who were Quraysh? Were they believers or, or disbelievers? Pagans, disbelievers. So the majority of the town were disbelievers in God. They rejected God. So God says, those, the majority of the people here are لا يعلمون الحق. They do not know the truth. God says the majority do not know the truth. And this is the case everywhere. 
If you take any society, not just Mecca, any society, go to America, go to the most educated communities and countries, and go to the least. Go to the rich and go to the poor countries. Go to the black, go to the white. The vast majority, this is, this is a fact embedded in the Quran. Majority of people, they do not know the truth. Only the minority knows the truth. The majority do not know the truth. The majority always follows their ancestors' traditions. But if they sit, allow themselves, if they stay away from bigotry, from bias, and they sit and they study and they research, they'll find the truth. But they have no time for it. They have time for everything, but they don't have time to search for the truth. God says, so if someone tells you one day, listen, Christianity is right and Islam is wrong. And when you ask him why, he says, because the Christians are double the Muslims. They are more in number. Tell him, but let, let me tell you that Buddhism is better than Christianity because Buddhists are bigger in number than, than Christians. It's not about numbers. It's not... It's not about quantity, it's about equality. Same thing in Islam. If someone says, oh, the other tradition is 80%, 85%, are followers of Ahlul Bayt only 10, 15%. So this means others are right and you are wrong. It's not about majority. It's not about the majority, my friends. Always since the creation of the universe, people who followed the truth were the minority. Always. Read this in the Torah, in the Bible, and the Quran. From the time of a prophet, Nuh. God says only few people followed him. Comes to time of Ibrahim, only few followed him. Times of Musa and all the prophets of the, the Israeli prophets, only the minority followed them. Jesus himself, only a minority followed him. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa only a minority follows him. Minority follows the truth, not the majority. It's not about numbers. God says to the Prophet, وَلَوْ تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُظِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ The Prophet, God says to the Prophet, if you make a survey, a survey of the people of earth and ask them about their opinion, you make a survey, and if you want to follow that survey, the result, they're going to misguide you. They're going to misguide you from the path of God. وَإِن تُطَعْ If you follow, أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ The majority of the population of earth, they're going to misguide you. Does this mean majority is good? No. This is a proof that the majority is not always following the truth. The majority of the people, they follow their own whims and desires. They do not follow the truth. Let's conclude with the 25. وَمَا أَرْسَلْنَا مِنْ قَبْلِكَ مِنْ رَسُولٍ إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ <clears throat> And we sent no messenger before you. No messenger before you, O Muhammad. Save that we revealed to him. إِلَّا نُوحِي إِلَيْهِ This a phrase, this maxim. أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ Verily, there is no God but I, so do worship me. This is the universal message from day one until the last day. This is the most important fundamental of faith. The most important fundamental, أَنَّهُ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ There is no God. No, no God, it means no boss above you, no power. No authority above you, save the authority of God. Don't submit yourself to any authority. Listen to God first. Don't listen to any president, any prime minister, any government, any leader who invites you to other paths. Listen to God. You are responsible before God. The one who sustains you is God. The one who created you is God. 
The one who sends you provision is God. The one who is protecting you is God. وَإِذَا مَرِضْتُ فَهْوَ يَشْفِينَ وَهُوَ الَّذِي يُطْعِمُنِي وَيَسْقِينَ It is God who feeds me. He gives me food and a drink and healing and peace. It is God. So don't submit. Don't submit. You You are, you are, you are valuable. You are important. Don't submit yourself to any other, other authority except the authority of God. إِلَّا أَنَا فَعْبُدُونَ all the prophets were unified in this message. In this basic and fundamental message, the message of monotheism and oneness of God. Do not worship others. Do not worship. Do not worship wealth. Do not worship the seat of the government. Do not worship your family. Do not worship yourself, your desire. Worship God. Put God first. If something is in conflict with God, put him aside. But if they are in line, conformity with God, respect them. God says, even your father, even your parents who are the closest people to you. وَإِن جَاهَدَاكَ عَلَىٰ أَن تُشْرِكَ بِي مَا لَيْسَ لَكَ بِهِ عِلْمٍ فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا If your parents who are the, the, the closest people to you, and you must love them dearly, but if one day they ask you to worship other than God, فَلَا تُطِعْهُمَا Do not obey them. Respect them, but don't obey them. We respect many people in the community, but we don't obey them. Respect is something and obedience is something else. We have to differentiate between them. Even my parents, if they invite me to follow the wrong path, I would love them, still love them, and respect them, but I am not going to obey them. I'm not going to obey them because I'm not accountable before them. My parents are going to die. My parents are not the ones who are sustaining me and providing me. My parents are temporary caretakers. They're going to come and go. The one who is permanent caretaker is God. The one who comes and doesn't go is God. Consider God first. Be loyal to God. This is the fundamental message of every religion, every religion from day one. لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدون وما أرسلنا من قبلك من رسول إلا نوحي إليه أنه لا إله إلا أنا فاعبدون إن شاء الله we see you tomorrow صلاة الجمعة at 12.05 and by the way from tomorrow Fajr in a few hours from now we're going to have uh, <coughs> Salat al-Fajr here inshallah the Fajr prayers jama'ah in congregation so if you can attend inshallah uh, one of the mu'mineen is going to lead the prayers I cannot make it unfortunately so and then after that dua on nutbah inshallah is going to be read at Fajr inshallah so enjoy this place at Fajr it's very spiritual beautiful especially if it is raining so, inshallah, they continue this tomorrow, tomorrow from breakfast. Yeah, and after that, breakfast. Halim or Kalapacha, I don't know. <laughs> inshallah, light to breakfast so they can come to the Friday prayers. If the breakfast is heavy, they're going to sleep. So, inshallah, light to breakfast. Say, Had Samir, tell them light to breakfast. They don't go and sleep, you know. اللهم اغفر للمؤمنين والمؤمنات والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات تابع اللهم بيننا وبينهم بالخيرات إنك مجيب الدعوات إنك غافر الخطيئات إنك ماح السيئات وجاعلها حسنات إنك على كل شيء قدير for the soul of the martyrs of Gaza and Palestine and مرحوم محمد السويدان أبو علي قراءة سورة الفاتحة مع الصلاة على محمد وآل محمد